Good morning, folks. Many of you were expecting to see the feature educational webisode on this channel today, How to Watch the Sun. It was indeed released early, and there is no charge to view it. Citations are being posted to suspiciousobservers.org this weekend. The site itself is still under major construction, but the link to the video can be found beneath this video with the rest of today's citations. Starting off in Canada, where an earthquake and multiple aftershocks started the day with a jolt, it was reading 5.0 on many meters. Six pointers have been sporadic, even this one in Japan leaves us below average for 7 and 14 day windows. Took a tremor way up north as well. In Algeria, a Chinese vessel has been found to contain radioactive material. Toxins of the natural kind are again inundating Washington state as red tide. You can find these stories on the RSOE alert map. You remember we reported underground earthquakes at the Pavlov volcano. NASA's Earth Observatory has since captured an eruptive event. May must be volcano month. Here's Titan's topography. It is not the only graphic, and I won't spoil the rest of the well-written article. It's linked for you below. NOAA has released a precipitation anomaly chart comparing current to a 30-year period ending in the year 2000. Interesting how different the patterns were and that drought and flooding are still concerns, but perhaps in different areas of the country. Thunderstorms possible in northern Australia and northland New Zealand. Heavy rain causing flooding in Italy as the cell moves east and the next low spins atop Spain. Low pressure cells in the central states. The western lows will break the full counterclockwise pattern, but the leading edge is unabated and ripping north. Hard. Record heat could be seen in Canada today along with these states, with the evening bringing chances for severe weather, tornadoes, hail, and flooding. You remember, folks. The CMEs from the first two X flares missed Earth, but the third was expected to hit us yesterday. It arrived a few hours late as the new day began, readings spiking on the ACE telemetry. Orange density, yellow speed, green plasma temperature. It's a solid whack to the magnetic shield with long duration plasma penetration not wholly linked to the impact. Inductions are definitely strongest at the latest hours of the chart. We are officially in a low level geomagnetic storm. Auroras can be seen on the night side of the planet, and to complement the polar scene is our continuing radiation storm. It will fade today, barring further instigation. DRAP shows the effect at high latitude. You'll also remember yesterday's M flare in progress as we met up yesterday morning. It is now fully updated. A clear CME was produced by the M flare, and you can probably tell that most will miss Earth to the left or east and a bit north. But SOHO shows that ejecta is visible leaving all sides of the disk blocking the sun. And even with most missing left, all sides ejecta is a halo eruption and that means Earth will be hit. NASA agrees as their endless spiral shows impact to Earth. Depending on the timing, it could be another minor storm, could be nothing, or could ramp the system with the current storm. As you watch NOAA confirm that impact on their endless spiral, know this second impact is usually the better learning opportunity about our magnetic shield. Gong shows the umbral field remains wide open and might be done twisting, just in time as the red portion is the most significant. That's the corona hole you see darkly turning into an earth-facing position over the next three days. It will be interesting to see how far it extends north on its trailing side. 304 angstroms reveals more spots coming in. We'll show dancing plasma at the solar north pole and a close-up of the M flare that set another CME this way. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.